Greetings from Cybertron. This is Soundjack here with a review of the Transformers Cybertron Deluxe Class Landmine. So Landmine was one of the number of figures I pick up, picked up from TFCon. He, uh, I got him at loose ten dollars re uh, retail for what he was uh, at the time of his toy release, and I am so glad I got him. I don't know why, out of like all the characters from the Cybertron cartoon that I didn't get, like he was one of the ones I was like, wow, how did I not get him? I, I don't know what necessarily drew me to him. I think maybe just because of the fact he was the first one, like the main, the first one to like interact with the humans and get close to the humans. I think that's m maybe why, but like I always wanted him. I mean, I always want, I, I definitely want all of the Cybertron figures at some point, but like, I don't know, something like, there was always some like kind of intrigue to him that I like. I really wanted him for a particular re reason. But uh, anyway, let's get a closer look at Landmine in his toy form right now. And you can see he turns into a uh, front end loader. Uh, with um, I was always confused what this was, but uh, according to the wiki, this is supposed to be like a pile driver that is attached to the back of this front end loader, which is nice, which is neat. Um, certainly makes sense for why it's there uh as you can see he's predominantly yellow and maybe that's why because i was always a fan of yellow maybe that's why i was always drawn to landmine wanted a landmine um but uh we also have some nice uh scuffed up paint detailing here to make it look like he's been working as well as some nice red over here with a little bit of nice rivet detailing in there um you got a little bit of orange on the lights and a little bit of black and orange up here on those lights. You got a nice Autobot symbol right there. And that's actually seems to be molded in rather than a tampograph because there's actually like depth to like the white bits on that Autobot symbol right there, which is very nice, which is very nice to see. Uh, you got some different red going on like on these windows right there. That's actually maybe like a bit more of a maroon or a purple. Um, but that's, um, it's also a bit sparkly. Also a bit sparkly paint on that. So uh, that's a thing too, um, because you can actually look inside here for whatever reason. It doesn't seem like that's uh, like a clear plastic or anything, or translucent plastic, I should say. Um, there's also a lot of grays and browns going on like around for where the, where the arms are. There's browns for around, uh, around the wheels you've got a lot of yellow and reds going on here you've got a molded ladder and even though the texturing on the ladder down here is different from the texturing up there but whatever uh, you got some nice gray smoke stacks back there yellow and black and gray on this pile driver contraption in the back big big black wheels with gray bits uh, with gray pieces for the center on the back you just got a gap and then underneath you got some robot mode legs hanging underneath there um he does have four he does have his four main wheels and they do roll you got to push them down a little bit to make sure they're all level because uh, you can see over here these two are rolling but this one's not rolling as much i don't know why that doesn't sit but he also has these two tiny extra wheels and that gets involved with his cyber planet key but we'll get that in a moment because there is a little bit of articulation with this toy because he is a front end loader um he does have plenty of articulation going on here his main points of articulation are this hin these these hinges are right there that you allow him to bend that far up and that far down um you got you can you utilize the, these hinges right there, right there and there, um, to allow him to bend that far down and that far up, if you so desire. And then you got these hinges, the two hinges right here that allow the shovel itself to move that far down and that far up. And I guess if you want, you can um, move um, the pile driver bit, which is also his gun. So now we're moving on to the accessory. So we'll take a look at the gun separated from him. Um, I already showed it off in the vehicle mode. Um, if you press these gray pipes back here, um, press, press gray pipes right there. I don't know why that was sticking, um, but it has fired. 
There we go. You got to push it back. You got to push it back and it will fire the missile that is the pile driver and it can store on the vehicle on the back like so. That's just the look I've always had. For uh, That's the look I've always known him to have. So I just, I just kind of left it on instead of like keeping it off to the side and then pulling it into the shot. But um, we've also got a cyber planet key to talk about. Um, he does come with an Earth cyber planet key and this is the key he came with when I bought him at TFCon. However, uh, the code on him is incorrect. This is actually a code for Crosswise, and I know this because I do have a Crosswise figure and I was going through the Earth key, the Cyber Planet keys I had to find landmines, and I noticed I had two of the same numbers, so, uh, well, you know, Crosswise will be coming Thursday, um, but his actual code number was um, DR94. That's the code that would have been on the back of his Cyber Planet key that would have um, giving you access to extra information on Landmine on Hasbro's website back in the day. Um, but he does have, uh, but he still is able to use this cyber, any cyber key really. And you put it in and instead of activating anything, you actually have to hold the wheel and then turn the cyber planet key in the wheel and it pull, and it makes these spikes come out of his tires. And you can do that on either side and boom, you got spike tire, back to wheel tires. And um, that doesn't make for any good rolling at all. So what you do is you kind of give him an, a, a bit of an attack mode. And off of these hinges, you're gonna fold those up, fold those wheels up. And with these tiny back wheel, tiny wheels I mentioned here before becoming the, re the other wheels, while you have this gimmick active. And you see this, wheel right here will and if you there is this wheel right here and if you turn it uh, you will make um, those tires spin so then you got him doing that so you gotta uh, uh, excavate a front end loader with a jackhammer in the back using uh, spinning buzz sauce to get through his enemies okay Whatever floats your boat. He didn't use this in the show that often in this form. He mainly used it in his robot form. And then you can just fold everything back in. And I guess if you really want to store the cyber key on him, since plugging the key in doesn't actually activate anything, um, you can just store it in the wheel and it'll just roll. But that's a little silly. So, uh, yeah. So now time for a size comparison. Here he is with... Legends class Bumblebee. And you can see how large he is compared. Deluxe class Chromeda. Certainly landmines much taller. And even without the what his robot mode gun is attached, um still certainly longer. Probably be a bit shorter if you like you got rid of the bulldozer with the front end loader bit, but um, still longer. Voyager class Megatron is up next. And, uh, not counting this gun, Megatron is just longer than Landmine. And Leader class Six Shot. And comparing, um, still longer than landmine without the gun and you can see all that all right that's all there is to say on the vehicle mode so let's roll right along to the robot mode and to do that we're going to start by taking off the gun uh, next thing we're going to do is we are going to take the wheels and put the move them up into that attack position i mentioned before we'll come up here we'll move the front end loader bit out of the way and come down here and move the legs down. They do not tab anywhere, it's just the joints on them are tight enough that they just sit there, which is not normally a thing I like, but even after 12 years, because I guess, the, I think this one originally came out in 2005, yeah, 12 years, it's still tight, so they did it well. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you move, you fold that down, 
you know, come to the front and you'll split the legs. This tab goes into that slot right there. You will split the feet and form both the feet and the heel. Forward and back. You'll come down and you'll come to the sides and rotate the wheels down 180 degrees so they are in that position. And then you got the legs all done. Next, you're going to come and you're going to split the scoop part of him. Fold the arms out to the side. Then you're going to come on this hinge and fold that up, revealing the robot mode hand, and then fold it all down on that hinge, and then you've got the arm all done. Repeat that on the other side, fold that up, fold that down. Next, you're going to take this entire assembly and fold it onto his back. And then we'll come in here. We're going to split these smokestack pipes off of this. Um, of note, this tab has to go in that slot, but in order for this to work, they have to both go up and fold in together, or else that's not gonna, that's not gonna get tabbed together. So do know that. Um, fold these smokestacks back like so, and then you rotate Landmine's head forward, and boom, you've got Landmine in his robot mode, and he looks fairly nice. Fairly nice. Chest and legs, I think, look fine. The arms, I think, could have been a little better. But hey, he still looks pretty good. Um, coming in close uh, on his head sculpt, he's got a very nice silver face. Brown for the helmet, uh, blue in the eyes. A little bit of silver on, like, those bits, on, like, some bits on his helmet. And, he, and like, even two very tiny silver stripes on his chin. That is a very tiny detail to paint. Um, and then a bit of red on that head crest right there. And I'll leave a little bit of red at that point right there. There's a lot of paint on that. There's a lot of detailed paint on that head. That's nice. That's very nice. Um, smoke specs are still small, solid gray. You got the Autobot symbols moved to his chest. For, uh, late, uh, you got these gray things going on all over. Wait, do these move? Oh, I guess those move. I guess you can do stuff with that if you want. I'm not actually... Huh. I never noticed those before until I was reviewing this. I don't know where they're supposed to be. I guess they're, they can move forward and they're extra guns, I guess. I don't know what they're... I, oh, hold on. Oh, okay, that does fold down. Whoops, I am sorry. I did not... I was not finished because... I mentioned before that there's this weird gap going on up here. And these this all folds down. And then this bit comes in and like fills out the crotch, I guess. Because that is like, there there would be a very weird, there is a very weird gap here without that piece there. So this does all fold down and that fills a gap and that's neat. Okay, never noticed that before. Huh, well, good thing I caught that. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so you got those gray bits right there and then that gray bit right there for to making the crotch. The rest of the crotch is yellow, and then you got the brown upper legs, gray for the knees. Got some bl black and red going on on that yellow on the lower legs. You got the wheels there, and you got the feet there. You saw those before. And you got the arms. You got some details. You got those very barely detailed fits. Like, at some angles, you can just see the details. At other angles, it's like there's supposed to be details on that fist. Eh. Eh. Um, like I said, the arms don't look too, too great. I think there could have been a lip. With how well the head is, I'm surprised there isn't, like, different, better paint on, like, these shoulders and whatnot. Also, I think, I think in my head from the cartoon, I think he was also a bit more yellow in the cartoon. I want to say his helmet, helmet was yellow instead of brown in the cartoon. Um, maybe I'm misremembering, but I feel like he was a bit more yellow than the brown, than brown, than that he was here. Um, but also, um... I also would have liked to see these scoop these uh, scoop halves like fold up a little closer to the arms, rather than being as far as they are. But hey, it's it's fine because I mean we also got this giant backpack. But I'm not I don't care about that backpack that much, um, just because that was more accurate more accurate. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, besides that, he can hold his uh, gun in his hand, and you've got that going on. Um, and you are 
in fact able to store it on his back right here if you do not want him holding it in his hand and that's nice that there is storage for that and the cyber plan key is still active in this mode you pull just pull those out pull those out and then it may, be, it may seem useless on the back right there but as was done in the cartoon you just flipped all of this up and around right off his head and then boom you got you got giant um, turbine wind generator things that's what the cartoon called it made it so he, he can do that now um, or you can just leave it like this and then you just got giant blades if anyone tries to come up behind him. Um, but I think that's probably the more the more better position. And then these, the wheel gimmick still works um, for all of that. And again, the main place to store the cyber plant key is actually in the cyber key ports in those wheels if you want to do Oh wait, hold on. Uh, articulation. Didn't go over the articulation yet. Okay, for articulation, his head is able to rotate a full 360. It seems to be on a swivel, no ball joint or anything. Um, his arms are able to rotate a full 360. And there, and I don't know what it's on. In, it looks like there's a tight ball joint in there. Um, but he is able to like bend his arm up and down you can see like the shoulder bit right there is actually moving by itself separate from everything else um, there's a pin right there that allows his arms to go that far up and that far down his his elbow has a ball joint allowing him to bend 90 degrees and if you can get the clearance able to make a complete 360 rotation wrists don't really have articulation except that if you want to count that as articulation no waist articulation However, he does have hip articulation. Uh, his legs are able to bend that far forward, that far back, uh, get that arm out of the way. Only that far out because things are bumping in the way. His knees are able to bend at 90 degrees. And he does have a knee swivel, so he's able to rotate 360. And he, his feet are articulated enough that you can get bend them down, but not them up. And I guess if you want to position the smokestacks differently, you can do that as well. But I do like that up there. Okay, now that's all there is to say on this robot mode. So now it's time for some robot mode size comparisons. Here he is with Legends class Bumblebee. And Bumblebee comes up to about those gray pieces in his lower torso. Uh, Deluxe Class Chrome Dome, who is now much taller than Landmine, though Landmine certainly has more mass to him. Uh, well, not much taller, but like he is clearly taller than Landmine, being about half a head taller than Landmine. Uh, we got Voyager Class Megatron right here. And Landmine is about around there on Megatron's chest. Eta class six shot, and landmine comes up to a similar place of um, on that in the middle of that skirt panel right there. He's got going on. Just let me erase the camera a little bit so you see that a little clearer. And of course, here he is with the channel's mascots, Soundwave, and Wheeljack. And Soundwave's feeling pretty at home this week with his fellow Cybertron figures. So yeah, Landmine's a cool little figure. If you get him for a good price and you like his aesthetic, um, I'd say get him. Uh, he does have a lot of bulk to him. His arms are a little weird, but hey, he's nice. He's bulky. Now, if you like bulky figures, he's nice. Uh, if you like geek figures with interesting gimmicks, he's nice. Um, the wheels are very, very, end up being very backpacky, but they don't particularly get in the way of articulation, unless you like, you're trying to have him reach for something behind him. Um, the arm, the, these might be a bit more of a hint, like aren't even really that much of a hindrance, except again, if you're like trying to do something with him reaching the back. It's not like you're just trying to get him to go back a little bit, but like you, you can get him to go back, get his arms to go back enough, I think. 
personally. I granted I don't do a whole whole lot of posing, but they, the backpack will get in the way, but not terribly in the way. But I still like him. I think he's cool. If you get a chance to get him complete, I'd say pick him up. Uh, so that's all I have to say on Landmine. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at soundjack 426 Also, please consider donating on my Patreon page to help support the channel. All of the links will be in the description below. Thanks for tuning in. This is Soundjack signing off.